Here is a post from United Masters. All right. They said a look into how major label deals are negotiated when you check it out during a conversation that Robert F. Smith had at his alma mater. Businessman Robert Smith detailed how private equity firms function. His outline had similarities to how major label deals are constructed in order to most benefit the label monetarily without actually investing time and energy into a lot of the artists they sign. Mm. Check this out. Let me tell you what private equity is. Okay, it is typically eight white males sitting around a table arguing about which of their deals is better than the others. <laughs> they have 15 or 18 deals in their mind and 25 relationships. They think that if they bring them together, they can make money. And then they sit at the table and argue about, well, my deal is better than yours and I'm gonna shoot your idea. It's a very bespoke process. And most people think, oh, by that, the cream will rise to the top, the best returns will, 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 will be, yeah. uh, will manifest out of that process. But go look at the facts. The facts show high volatility, okay? Some cases do great, some cases lose everything, right? And you know, look, I don't call that investing. That's placing bets. That alone, right, when we look at it, if you've paid attention to label infrastructure, traditionally enough, you know that, Artists are looking for one big win. Now, labels are looking for one big win to take care of all their losses. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, y'all 500 artists might fail. But, man, this one hit and man, they covered everything and more. That's where we're getting our profit from. Why are labels so tight with that money? Right. That's a part of why, because we don't know how we're going to make this work. Right. Mm -hmm. So. And we know that we don't know how to systematically make something pop. So we have to do our best guess, provide our system of resources to increase the odds. But then at the end of the day, we just got to see what happens. Gambling. 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 It's gambling. It's, it's a, it's a more strategic gamble, but not so strategic. I don't, even, I don't even want to call it, in most cases, no, nah, I don't even want to call it. I, what's a better word? It is a, it's a system built to, to gamble and lessen the odds of major losses. All right. So I've talked to people, actually, Wendy Day, Shout out to her. She was one of the people the first kind of told me that, look, they have numbers when it comes to these deals that artists make. All right. So the accounting department has it cleared. I can do this number. I can do this number because I have to make a certain amount of money on an investment. They are looking at the odds of this. They're working all the numbers. So when you're thinking that you're in this process of a bidding war, you will have people drop out. Yeah. Why? Because they have numbers that are work based on their system and their infrastructure that they can make an investment in. So a lot of times I think from an ego standpoint, we think we're bidding and getting a maximum value. But really what we're getting is getting the maximum value that they can give us, not what we're worth. And in some cases, probably many cases, your worth is up beyond their maximum, but you're happy that you negotiated to a higher point. Even though that higher point is not your true worth, it's just the maximum worth that they can view you as and provide for you, which kind of sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you're like, oh, yeah, I, I, I made these folks fight and then they offered me this number and I went with them, you know? So all this is an illusion in some ways, right? And being aware of that, we kind of have to work to na to navigate that and just understand the game for what it is and how we want to flip it for ourselves and know that this might be the most value I might get this time, but then you have to have a long-term vision, which is another discussion. But staying with his example of private equity, you know, on one end, look, you understand the idea of a company trying to leverage. Yeah is resources to minimize the work. That's what everybody's trying to do, yeah. right? So can't feel bad about it like or be mad at somebody for doing the shit. That's what everybody's trying to do in their life in one way or another, right? But, of course, 
you have to be aware that when you're doing that with somebody that might work against you. So my, I get it. I get how if I'm the artist and I hear this, okay, that might be a little bit upsetting. Now, how do you navigate this other than negotiating, trying to get your maximum value? There are some labels that might be more akin to understanding who you are, believing in your vision. Mm -hmm. Uh, You have to start to look for some of those other things. Right. Yeah. So like, look, business is business. Uh, You know, I, I hate that term maybe in general and just applying to everything, but like, in general, business is this trying to leverage your resources to get a maximum out of output. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So we can't be mad at that and act like that shit is evil. Right. But he said bespoke. It's a bespoke process. And I'm not going to lie. I couldn't remember what that shit meant. So I looked it up. <laughs> so bespoke means made for a particular customer. Okay. All right. So what he's saying is that process might work for some, but it don't work for others either. Yeah, don't work for most. That's what he's really saying. So you have to figure out if the label or people that you're going in business with for whatever type of deal doesn't make sense for your system. Because what we experience all the time is people saying, I mean, yeah, man, that other artist, I hear them complaining, but they ain't never said nothing crazy to me Mm -hmm. or all my money coming. Like, I'm good. Right. Mm -hmm. And that is the reality of it as well. Business models fit some people just like different artists fit some consumers. Let me take a quick second to say if you're an artist trying to blow your music up or if you're a manager, a music professional in general trying to help an artist blow their music up, I have something that's a game changer for you and it's completely free. As you may know, we've helped multiple artists go from zero to hundreds of thousands of streams. We've helped multiple artists go from hundreds of thousands to millions of streams, chart on Billboard, go viral, all of that stuff. And we've now made the way we've branded multiple artists and helped them go viral completely free, step by step in Brandman Network. All you have to do is check out brandmannetwork.com. You apply. It's completely free. But the thing is, We're not going to let everybody in forever. So the faster you apply, the better your chance of getting accepted. Brandmannetwork.com. Check it out. Back to the video. Yeah. Yeah. I I can't remember who we were talking to recently that broke it down like sports terminology, right? It was like some players do better in in a different team system than than another team, right? Mm -hmm. The play style ends up kind of changing. Or the the play style fits them as a player a lot better for whatever reason. But I think like artists – looking at it like the labels are gambling, I think that should make a lot of things that they typically despise about labels make a lot of sense, right? Yes. 100%. So, you know, big one is, man, why are labels no longer doing artist development? That shit expensive. And expensive. Then I've been developing you for four or five years just for you to quit. You know, worst case scenario, something bad happens to you. Or we just learn the shit doesn't hit anymore because the whole music landscape changed. Right. Nope, and, not doing it's that. It's harder to make money. Mm-hmm. So I don't have that expense to oh, yeah, to give up. Yeah. 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 It's like I'm investing in however many tens of care you and you and you and you not making no money back into year four or five. Mm. I'd rather catch you at year four or five. You know what I'm saying? Like to be real, right? So 100%. they get the 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 gripe for like, you know, signing viral acts. But it's like the viral act, while yes, there's still a risk, they have a bit more proof of concept than you that doesn't. So in their minds, it's a safer bet, right? Hey, he already got a million followers. You know what I'm saying? He already got a song with 10 million streams on it. He already got a content mm-hmm. infrastructure and a team. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, this this, this feels right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like we can, mm-hmm. can kind of move ahead and do our thing. So, yeah, that, that's it, it's, it's just interesting because one of those things were like, if you pay enough attention to how labels move, you you could kind of like guess it. You know what I'm saying? You could, you could see it, but it is nice having somebody that is understanding that say that. But then the other thing too that I think he, what he mentioned on is like the, what am I trying to say? I guess the like the, the human aspect of it, right? At the end of the day, these labels, these companies, these whatever people you look up to, but they're just headed by a person. And That's it. Sometimes people make bets not off of like what they think is the best thing or what, you know what I'm saying, they think has the potential to do really well. Sometimes they invest in things because their friend told them about it and they really want to help their friend, mm-hmm. right? How many times have you ever seen an artist that you'd be like, man, why is this 
motherfucker getting so much attention, man. I, I personally feel like he's trash. And then you learn that him and the head of somebody are like childhood best friends, or like grew up or something, right? They right. got like a, a pact or a bond that's deeper than just the, the business relationship, right? Yep. And so I, I think a lot of people tend to just look at these systems as just businesses, bro. Like, and, and so you kind of think like, oh, a business is going to do, should be doing like what is best for the business or best for the bottom line. But there's a human at the top of this, bro. And sometimes humans do things that are irrational come when you compare it to the system they typically hold themselves against you know what I'm saying? yeah and you, rational within that system might be rational within their life as a whole exactly exactly right, right. yo I, i'm a label and we typically like to sign you know rappers that come from the streets but i'm about to take a risk and sign this rapper from the suburbs it's like oh my god that's so groundbreaking you know what i'm saying <laughs> like that's so so life-changing but like that happens you know what i'm saying like sometimes those decisions get made because of the perspective of the person at the top you know what i'm saying and then it trickles down to the rest of the organization See, this is what I love about this conversation because when you pay attention, you study business and you study people, none of this shit is surprising. Mm -hmm. And you would be messed up to try to assume otherwise. Yeah, you look weird for trying to go against it. You, you look weird <laughs> for trying to go against it because you are the person that you're fighting in many ways, mm -hmm. right? Human, right? People say stuff about like helping out friends right or giving some advantages to their kids mm -hmm. wouldn't you do that shit yeah or it's like yeah, you think you're the only one thinking that yeah why in the fuck would i make all this money <laughs> to not lessen some of the struggles of my family we're not talking about like spoiling or putting on and giving around giving shit that maybe they straight up don't deserve and like you have zero talent and then I'm, I'm like, I'm, I wouldn't lie to my kid and be like, dang, bro, you can sing and you can't sing. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you don't have good music, you don't have good music. But at least maybe if he wanted to be in that category, I don't want my kids to do to, to be artists in that way. But <laughs> hey, like, all right, you might get a studio to record in yeah. that nobody else could typically afford or they would have to work to have that themselves. Yeah. Right. Advantages come like that's what we all do. We all want to create advantages for people that we care about in ourselves in some form of fashion, yeah. right? Now, we're not talking about being unethical or any of that extreme stuff, but like it's just basic human nature and people tend to help the people they know more. I'm not mm -hmm. even talking about best of friend, but like if I don't know who you are, right? This person found out some way to meet me, right? And now we're like in the same circle or we just happen to haphazardly be in the same circle and then we spark it off cool right and friends happen to meet friends of their friends like yep. that's how how all this stuff works it's, so that's why people try to work to get in circles right that's why um it doesn't make sense to fight or spend too much time thinking and, and creating this myth of making it bigger than it is like there's this rage against you or or you know there's this uh underlying evil element to everything you know what i mean you know how y'all get with music now let's get back to the business it's the same shit mm -hmm. right we look so much about we look at so many things as artists are raging against the machine um and overcoming labels and and labels are now giving these better deals because they demand it it's all just basic business you yeah. alluded to it well look I'm not making the same amount of money from music. So I'm also not going to give you a deal for as much. Right. And, or I'm not going to invest in you until you get to a later point down the road. Yep. Back in the day. Right. There were labels that had like legitimate artist development labels, you know, that had like Motown. They had like, um, like coaches for etiquette coaches, mm -hmm. right? They'll put you with some, some songwriters. They had this entire assembly line, literally, of people to run you through. But that means I had to pay all of these different coaches to coach you, yep. right? And the rest of my artists and have them on my payroll to build this system out. Now I can't afford to do all that because the risk is higher and I have to cut expenses, right? Because it's hard to make money in music. But what I can do is give you a better deal but i'm also going to take less risk yeah right so why aren't the labels doing x y and z well i didn't invest <laughs> in doing x y and z yeah you are basing what i should be doing on a perception from 
yesteryear. The old business model. <laughs> the old business model. <laughs> we ain't in that today. Yeah. That's why I ain't doing shit for you because it don't make sense based on how I run shit before. At one time, to be real, labels did do shit. Yeah, a lot of shit. A lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. So, like, when you just pay attention to the business model, it's not like we're not here to argue on the behalf of labels. It's arguing on the behalf of basic logic because when you face it that way, it's going to make all of your deals better. Yeah. It's going to help you be less surprised. So it's going to create your planning a, l- a lot better, right? It's going to put create. It's going to in- inspire you to plan better and help you make strategic decisions better because your expectations won't be put in the wrong places. Yeah, exactly. Like, it literally doesn't make sense for this person to do this if you understand what that person does. It literally does make sense for that person to do that because it's like, hey, based on your percentage and how things are bust down and the way your business model works, you should be going hard for me right now. And if you're not going hard for me, we we not going to be set up right all of those things become a lot easier to see when you literally pay attention to the business model at hand and every label don't have the same business model right there's some generalities but in periods of time people will be invested in one category more than another because they're trying to find their space in the market and they'll build infrastructure so you look at some labels like atlantic for a period of time was going hard on influencer types, right? Yep, yep. They were probably building more infrastructure and learning around that specifically, right? So all of this is something to pay attention to, not just a general label idea of what were labels yesterday, what are labels today in, in, in terms of general business, but what does this specific label seem to be invested in and how do they go about it, right? What is this distribution company seem to be invested in how do they go about it? Why are they able to only take 15% or why do they let me put their shit on the platform for free? Oh, cause they're charging me $20 a month or whatever. Right. Cool. But what does that mean too? Oh yeah. There's probably less investment in if my music goes anywhere. Cause they're not getting the percentage. Mm-hmm. They're cool. As long as I'm putting my, my shit on their platform. Right. All of that <laughs> makes a difference. And once you understand what those differences come with, then you can make an educated decision and build your systems around your choices as well. Yeah. Have your own business model. Yeah, exactly. Or at least look for the business model that makes sense for you. That's what it all boils down to, man, because you'll see artists argue against the system. It's like, bro, the system just is not for you. Go somewhere else. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Get out, get out of my yard complaining. I'm going to throw a rock out the window. Go down the street. <laughs> Because the way this party running, it, it, everybody else happy in this bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Talk about change the music. <laughs> you know, go down the street, right? That's all it is. Don't be that one person, right? Um, but but no, like seriously, it, you save yourself a lot of struggle and it's going to help you move a lot, a lot um, smarter. Because what I hate is the polarization of everything not just in music, but shoot media in general today. And when people are going so hard around these uh, topics and making them so emotional, they're actually causing people not to think. Mm -hmm. Like emotions, like the number one way to distract people from basic logic. So like always demonizing labels and these infrastructures, these pages that have all these pay, uh, these, like thumbnails and shit and videos about labels being evil and they're doing this, that, and the third, I guarantee, (laughs) look, all they're doing is monetizing your attention. You're like, oh, those people are screwing me over and they're the person who's educating me on all these people who are scamming me. No, they're playing in (laughs) to the people's predisposition to react to negativity and they're screwing you over in a way by taking your mind down a rabbit hole where you can no longer be truly productive in the marketplace. Yeah, but they, they set the flash bomb off over there so they could rob the bank over here. Th- that's exactly what's <laughs> going down. Like, that's exactly what's going down. So, like, stop watching all that shit too and taking that in. Like, all right, let me stop hearing how shit evil. So now I'm going to be so scared that I can't make a move. Let's just find out how the thing actually works because fear comes from the unknown. When you know that, hey, this man wasn't floating because it was some special effects going on. Oh, it's not as wild. It's not, it's, it's not that cool anymore, right? Yeah. It's like learning the tricks to the magic, yeah. right? Yeah. When you understand how things are done, 
it just becomes a matter of fact thing. So work on that, not this propaganda of fear and demonization that people push all the time. Now, with that being said, 